Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The most brutal prison in medieval and Tudor England. We believe that the medieval and Tudor times were very brutal with thousands of executions taking a place across England. Henry VIII executed 70,000 people during his almost four decade long reign on the throne. But many criminals found themselves in a number of different prisons across the kingdom. Many of these were very brutal and overcrowded with a significant amount of disease and illness spreading behind bars. One of the most brutal prisons across England was the clink, which gave its name to a slang term for prison as being locked in the clink. But what was the clink and why was it so tough and harsh? Now the clink was a prison in Southwark and London and it operated from the 12th century until the 18th century. The prison operated inside of the Liberty of the Clink, an area which was on the south bank of the River Thames, which was under the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Winchester. In this area, it became known for being a seedy area of the capital, and it was a place where much illicit activity took place. Prostitutes would work inside of the stew houses or brothels in this area many men would travel across the river to gamble and enjoy the liberty of the clink. The women who worked in the area were known as Winchester geese, and there was also bull and bear baiting inside of the liberty. Theatres and playhouses were also allowed in the area, with the most famous being the Globe, where Shakespeare's plays would be performed. The prison served the liberty of the clink, and the bishop kept all of the revenue in the area made from the liberty, and also he would put many people in prison for failing to make payments. The bishop would also imprison heretics, and today the Clink Prison Museum stands where part of the prison once was, next to Winchester Palace, the former bishop's residence. The prison was owned by the bishop since the year 860, and at the time it was only a small cell inside of a priest college. But as time went on, the clink was expanded, and a formal prison was created in the 12th century. The prison was a number of structures within the mansion area of the Bishop of Winchester's land, and he placed many local criminals on trial with them being held inside of the clink. Some prisoners were held with higher statuses, and they were looked after by jailers. They were poorly paid, and they found other ways to make money, and through this jailers were paid by prisoners, to make their stay behind bars better. The jailers managed to hire out rooms, beds, bedding, and food and drink as extra to prisoners who could afford it. They even accepted payment to loosen the iron chains that prisoners were held in. Some prisoners were even allowed to go outside of the prison to beg and to work if they were allowed. But if you were very poor, it was very tough for you inside of the clink. You'd get the worst treatment and the worst food. Poor prisoners had to beg at the air grates that led to the streets and many sold whatever they had to make their ordeal better. When a group of rioters in 1450 protested the statute of labourers, Winchester House was raided and they murdered clerics then also released all of the prisoners from the clink before it was burned down. This rebellion was later put down and the clink prison was rebuilt, but it was during the Tudor period that the clink became one of the most feared places of imprisonment. Many people who were found accused of heresy were held at the clink, and one of them was John Rogers, a man who published a translated version of the Bible. Rogers was held at the clink and then executed being burnt at the stake as a heretic. Also, Bishop John Hooper was imprisoned at the clink, and he too was later burned at the stake for publishing the translated Matthew Bible. It was during the Tudor period that some of the famous prisoners were held, such as Thomas Wyatt the Younger, the son of Thomas Wyatt the Poet, who rebelled against Bloody Mary I. Many heretics were held inside of the clink before they were then taken to their execution. Anthony Tyrrell, who was accused of plotting to kill Elizabeth I, was implicated in the Babington plot and was then held at the clink. Also, John Lowe and John Adams were held before they were hanged, drawn and quartered for being involved in plotting against Elizabeth. Henry Barrow and John Greenwood, who founded the Puritan Church, were held at the clink before they were then hanged at Tyburn. Their congregation sailed to America on the Mayflower. Also, John Gerard, a Jesuit priest, was held there before he was transferred to the Tower of London and tortured, but he then escaped from the tower. The name The Clink emerged as a prison around the 14th century. 
and one of the most common beliefs is that the clink referred to the sound of the blacksmith's hammer as he closed the irons around the wrists or ankles of the prisoners. It's also believed it could be linked to the sound of the cell door, but there was also a significant degree of torture deployed inside of the clink also. Some prisoners were brutalised by guards who were intent on extracting information from the prisoners. There were many other crimes in which people were held at the clink for, for trespassing or refusing to pay for cloth and services, and many other people who owed money to the people were imprisoned. A playwright who knew Shakespeare named William Houghton was held in the clink, and he was imprisoned for his debts. But the most feared element of the clink was the overcrowding and the poor conditions that the prisoners were held in. Disease was known to spread very quickly throughout the dirty prison, and it's likely that there were rats found in the clink. Throughout the century it was used as a site for heretics and religious criminals, but it was burned down in 1780 by rioters who yet again released all of the prisoners of the clink. But the clink is remembered as one of the most brutal prisons in history found on the south bank of the River Thames in London. Many people never made it out as they succumbed to disease behind the bars and would never be released from their iron shackles. Many prisoners who were sent to the Tower of London were then tortured and today it is only a small piece of brickwork that survives the clink inside the museum that sits on the site. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.